This is a Mercedes GLA 35 AMG crossover SUV. I bought this car for many reasons, but mainly for its sound system. I'm Deo Asbin, I'm a music producer and creator, and I often test my new music in cars, but I'm also an audiophile and like to listen to music on a quality sound system. If you're like me and bad audio puts you in a bad mood, then you understand my enthusiasm about this car. You know how sometimes you think that you had something great, but then you try something greater and you can't go back? That's exactly how I felt when I listened to music on this Burmester sound system here. For a couple of years, I had a car with a Bose sound system, and honestly, it was one of the best for that price range. I also tested premium sound systems in a Tesla, which is built by former AKG engineers, Aston Martin with Bang & Olufsen, Range Rover in Kia with Meridian, and Mazda in Porsche with Bose. Out of all of them, Tesla came pretty close to the Burmester sound system in this car. I also listened to Lucid Air with Dolby Atmos, but that is another level. And then I saw, or actually heard, this car. I've heard great things about what Burmester does with car audio, and I have to say that they do live up to expectations. But having a premium sound system is only half the experience, which can be definitely destroyed by improper setup. Here's how I set up mine for the best audio experience in this car. This Mercedes AMG has a 12-speaker 590-watt Burmester surround sound system with subwoofer and amplifier placed in the trunk for more balanced bass response, four tweeters in the A-pillars and top part of rear doors, three main speakers in the dashboard and above rear passenger seats, and four mid-range speakers in the lower part of all doors. The system is intelligent and makes subtle adjustments to sound reproduction to compensate for ambient noise and provide a consistent sound experience when driving. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are wired via USB-C. I wish it was wireless, but I'll deal with the cable for now. Sound customization options are accessible through the infotainment touchscreen. They include an equalizer, fader, sound focus, and sound profiles with a pure mode without any effects and a surround mode for immersive experience. To make sure that I'm getting the most transparent and accurate translation of music and audio in my car, I rarely use the equalizer. In this car, I like to keep it flat, but that's also because this sound system is one of the most balanced I've ever heard, and I do like to listen to music the way it was intended to be listened to by a producer. Most people will likely add bass, and often way too much, and that's because they're accustomed to the sound from commercial or hi-fi speakers and headphones, and those are usually not balanced and are designed to make everything sound pleasing. In general, if you hear that your bass is overpowering other elements of your music, that's already too much. So for the fader, I like to keep things in the middle or the front, and for sound focus, definitely in the front if I'm not carrying family or friends in the back, or just on my seat so I can have the best sound experience if I'm by myself. There's also an option to change the sound profile from pure, which doesn't add any effects at all, to surround, which speaks for itself. I definitely like the surround mode more because it makes me feel a little bit more immersed in the music. This is definitely pretty far from Burmester's top 4D 31 speaker sound system that you get in a Mercedes Maybach but I do like the surround mode more than the pure. The interesting part about this Burmester sound system is that poor recordings will sound okay because it will reveal more flaws than any other less balanced sound system, which brings me to the most important part. You can get Burmester only with Mercedes or with Porsche, and even then each car has a different acoustic setup and doesn't sound the same. In this car, music and audio and dialogue sound very crisp and accurate. I also have Sirius XM and I usually play either chill or electronic music, which is often bass heavy. But on this system, the bass is full and powerful, but never overwhelming. And mids and highs are clear and detailed. This sound system has great instrument separation and I do prefer the surround mode because it enhances that. 
There's more to this car than meets the ear. Design and technology are as important for me and music and audio are inseparable from them. I can definitely say that at this stage of my life, this car has become a design-minded representation of my taste. For example, my taste in music is a bit dark, electronic, somewhat industrial and futuristic. And I like the same things in this car when it comes to design and colors. The exterior is mountain gray metallic paired with black trim and black and titanium leather interior. The overall silhouette has an aggressive stance thanks to the Panamericana AMG grille, but overall it's a sleek and beautiful car. The AC vent design resembles jet turbines and adds an industrial feel to an otherwise sleek and futuristic interior clad with carbon fiber accents. Playing a dark techno track in this car seriously enhances my experience of listening to electronic music. Much of music making today cannot be what it is without high tech, and technology is also an essential part of Mercedes philosophy. I love the big infotainment touchscreen that runs MBUX software, which is modern, intuitive and intelligent. I prefer using the touchpad, however, because I don't feel like wiping my fingerprints off the screen all the time. The steering wheel is AMG's signature because it's so unique. I think an AMG steering wheel is probably the best designed wheel I've seen in a car under 100k. The ambient lighting reminds me of a cyberpunk movie and can be adjusted to your favorite color. The voice assistant is the Mercedes version of Siri and can control pretty much everything from climate settings to navigation to lighting and audio. For example, hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Play radio. A great bonus is the automatic folding mirrors, hands-free liftgate, heated and ventilated seats, wireless charging, heads-up display, keyless entry, augmented reality navigation, and MBUX interior assistant that responds to my hand and arm movements. If I reach for the touchscreen or console touchpad, the display can highlight desired features, and pointing forward with two fingers can call up my favorites menu. I love that the car can just anticipate me. My wheels are matte black with AMG brake calipers in silver. I'm happy they're not red, it's just not my style. I would prefer them black, but I'll keep them as they are. Lastly, I like when a car smells good because it enhances all other experiences that it creates for me. So I got these Montai 7-piece wood fragrance samples that I periodically spray on the floor carpet. I find that woody scents are the most suitable because they complement the interior leather smell the best and the car exudes a soothing unisex scent. And when a car sounds, looks, functions and smells terrific, it just makes driving it that much more enjoyable. Now, would I buy this car again if it didn't have the Burmester sound system? I am really not sure because for me it would be very difficult to justify the price tag when my main personal criterion isn't met. But this car definitely raises the bar for my next vehicle, which probably will have Dolby Atmos. And since we're on a topic of sound systems, I do have another one that I absolutely love and it's in my minimal home studio. If you want to take a tour and see how I set it up, I'll put a video right here and the link down below. If you like videos on music, design, tech and lifestyle, subscribe for more. If you like music in my videos, it's my original music that I release on Spotify, so follow me there, I'd love to see you there. And if you like to know more about my gear and my lifestyle accessories, check out my kid.co page down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.